Hey everyone, it's Victoria with Nutrition by Victoria. I have a master's of science in human nutrition and I specialize in metabolic health. So today we are going to be reviewing healthy ME per request for my coaching group. I have been getting slammed with questions from you guys on my YouTube videos lately, as well as my Instagram account. I can be found at Nutrition by Victoria for both. Um, and if you have personal questions, join my coaching group. The link for that is in the description of this video. I prioritize the questions that come out of my coaching group, um, including video requests. So uh, that will, that's where this one comes from. So let's get right into it. Um, healthy Emmy, uh, she's pretty much like Chef AJ, you know, follows this low calorie density starch solution thing, thinks that you can overeat on carbohydrates, even though she promotes a diet of abundance. So there's a little bit of a misleading, you know, notion there with what she promotes. She um, considers herself a nutritionist, even though I could not find any credentials, including on her website, um, big platform. She's got over 100K subscribers. And uh, yeah, so she's been <clears throat> trying to help people lose weight, eating a high carb, low fat plant based vegan diet. What I will say is I end up with her clients, okay, the ones who can no longer follow her program because it's too restrictive and it's too little calories and it's too focused on how can we <laughs> manipulate our brain chemistry into under eating, right? How can we trick our hunger and fullness cues instead of just honoring our natural desire for carbohydrate? So we're going to watch this video um, because it's one of her latest, what I'm, what I eat in a day. I will give that to her. She does do what I eat in a day videos. <laughs> But it's really hard to determine in the videos if that's like all in the same day, including on this one. So we'll go ahead and give this a watch. Struggling with or areas where they need more. Me, I mean, right where you left me doing a. Okay, we're just we're gonna try to focus on the food here exclusively. Okay. I am here with my beautiful Hawaiians, my Hawaiian sweet potatoes. And I know we all want the shot. We all want the shot. Give it to me, Emmy. Give it to me. Okay. Nobody asked for this. And here it is. Okay. I'm assuming that this is breakfast. Um, it's pretty common for her to have these purple potatoes for breakfast. What more can you ask for, right? And um, I've actually had these Hawaiian sweet potatoes before. I found them to be very dry, very dense sweet like cake you know but that's what these these folks are looking for they're looking that they, they say that the potato is the most satiating food right that studies have shown that that's because potatoes have a higher glycemic index than sugar okay so they're really just seeking out the carbohydrate in these potatoes and then trying to just trick themselves into eating you know as minimal as possible of these high carb, low fat foods. So this is her breakfast meal here. She's got three, I don't know, 100 to 150 calorie each potatoes, which is going to put the meal around with the lettuce, like anywhere from 420 to 620 calories for, I believe this is her breakfast. Okay. Very standard for healthy Emmy. Oh, put these in the instant pot yesterday. But what I notice in her videos is she talks so much about her food and then she very rarely shows herself like eating the whole meal okay so this whole time all she's done is talked and she hasn't like eaten anything Way too much let's eat these potatoes let's oh the, also with my starter pack and now it's cold because i've been talking so much with my chamomile tea let's continue with the day let's a lot of people drink tea too as a form of hydration, but in order to like trick themselves into like not, <laughs> not only eating as much as they need. Right. What, what I teach though, is that you don't need to do this. <laughs> you just eat as much carbohydrate as you want every day from fruits, uh, starches and sugars, and you're good to go. There's no overthinking. There's no rituals. There's no, you know, just 
waiting till I'm completely starving to eat the food. You just eat the food and you move on. So now we're into her next meal already. It's been a bit of time and I have gotten a hunger cue, which means it is time for me to eat again. So I don't eat based on what the clock says. I eat when the hunger comes. You know, our body has this incredible ability to tell us when it needs more fuel. And it's our responsibility to honor that. So let's do it. And she's right. Our body does regulate our hunger, hunger and fullness cues really well, particularly if we're eating a high carb, low fat diet, because our body runs on glucose. We need sufficient glucose in order to have that appropriate um, hunger and fullness cue regulation, which comes from leptin. But the thing about that is, is if you are chronically under eating carbohydrate, your hunger signaling is going to be suppressed. So I noticed that when I did Chef AJ's video, she said, oh, well, I will skip breakfast if I'm not hungry in the morning. But cortisol is elevated in the morning, and there is an association between skipping breakfast and prediabetes. And that's because when we skip breakfast, our cortisol level remains elevated, and that promotes insulin resistance. Whenever you have elevated cortisol, your body becomes insulin resistant, okay? This says previous studies have suggested robust biological mechanisms and the association between skipping breakfast and prediabetes. Skipping breakfast could affect glucose metabolism by elevating free fatty acid level and disrupting circadian rhythms. I'm using the Caraway nonstick pans. Absolutely love these. And Okay, so we're going to get to the food here. I'm just curious what the calorie content is. Meal. I am taking the French bread from the Shoba Brook Bakery. This is local to Boston, and I do get it from Whole Foods. Okay, take a look at the size of the fork here with the size of the bread, right? It's a, this is a tiny portion. So the bread, I'd say maybe 100 calories. And then the avocado mash, maybe 50 calories. So 150 calories for that little snack there. But you can use any great bread. You can make one of the breads from my cookbooks, like my Healthy Snacks cookbook. There's a bread in there. Or you can find a... So here I have my meal. How sad. Okay. Okay, so here's her plated meal. She water sauteed mushrooms and onions for another like 50 calories. So we're up to 200 calories. There's a piece of lettuce and some strawberries. I'll give it another uh, 50 calories for that for a 250 calorie meal. So we are up to roughly, uh, I'll give it 700 calories to maybe a thousand calories for these two meals together. I mean, look at the size of this lemon compared to the strawberries. This is a tiny portion of food. Satisfying. This will be the sun is shining on it. And of course, I'm going to take some photos with my vitamin B12 because it just looks so beautiful. And I do recommend taking a B12 supplement. You don't have to take her supplement. I recommend actually Solgar methylcobalamin. It can be found on Amazon. I'll leave a link for that in the description of this video. I've been taking that for years and it works great. It's a little sublingual, goes right under the tongue and dissolves. It doesn't contain any oil or anything. It's just a little pink tablet uh, and actually tastes pretty good too. And keep in mind, she said this is going to be so satisfying, but I mean, I don't know if you can see like her hand compared to the plate of food here too. It's so tiny. And I also want to mention about the, the fat added to the bread, right? So this is very common uh, amongst people who under eat to add fats to their food, right? And she even mentions in um, one of her other videos, she added tahini and a seed mixture to her potatoes that... Um, adding the fat makes her stay fuller longer. Well, why wouldn't you just eat more carbohydrate? Because healthy Emmy, I know that you know that fats actually increase insulin resistance because they block our body's ability to properly absorb sugar. Okay. 
I know that she knows this, but she's doing this to under eat. It's a strategy for under eating. And she promotes a whole food plant-based diet. So she's going to promote, you know, whole fruits, whole starches, including nuts, seeds, and avocados, which are all technically whole foods, right? But those fats still cause insulin resistance. And like I said, it is a strategy that many people use in order to under eat because fats do uh, take longer to digest. So they go much slower through our GI tract and actually make the absorption of everything much slower as well, which is why they can cause insulin resistance. So it's just important to note that, that instead of just eating more carbohydrate to fulfill your carbohydrate need, she is adding the fat so that she feels fuller instead of just eating more carbohydrate to fulfill her needs. So it's likely that she is experiencing elevated cortisol and um, that if she actually ate more food, right, if she just, you know, gave in and ate as much carbohydrate as she wanted, she would gain weight. But the trick is that these people, they remain slim, but they have to stick to either calorie restriction via this method or calorie restriction via low calorie, extremely low calorie density eating like what Chef AJ does. But in the meantime, you're actually slowing your metabolism. You're promoting fat storage when more food actually starts coming in because you can only do this for so long before you end up anemic or having some other or hypothyroid or having some other like metabolic problem related to the lack of calories coming in, the lack of carbohydrate calories coming in. I, I've experienced this personally. If I don't want to be anemic, I have to eat a lot of carbohydrate in my diet and carbohydrate coming from a fine sugar because sugar actually enhances iron absorption. And then where's the fruit? Like fruit is so, there. there's more calories from the avocado, the fatty fruit than there is from sweet fruit. I don't understand what the deal is here where we just are gonna restrict our fruit intake. It's not healthy. It's healthy to eat more fruit. It's healthy to eat more carbohydrate. It's not healthy to try to trick yourself all the time into eating less. And I know she runs too. So this, this woman, she's just, um, you know, setting herself up for when she gets older to have health complications related to chronic under eating. And the other thing too, that I want to mention is that if you've never been like obese or anything, and you're like healthy Emmy who started on this diet when she was very young. I believe she was 23 when she uh, moved, started with her healthy Emmy business. So I'm not sure like how long she's been eating this way, but, and then she was a runner in high school, I believe, I don't know, in college, but she's a runner. She still runs. And the other um, thing about that, so she was already going to be slim just naturally from being an active adolescent, right? And probably still being conscientious of what she was eating then. So then when you go on a, a calorie restrictive, low calorie density diet like this, you're going to drop weight and you can maintain that until you decide, oh, I'm having XYZ health problems like infertility, which I'm, you know, she hasn't tried to have a baby yet, or maybe she is trying and just not disclosing that information. Who knows? But there, you can run into issues with infertility, hypothyroid, anemia, all from chronic under eating. And that's what this still is. And, um, but she can stay super slim like she is. I mean, look at her, her waist size in this video. She's teeny tiny, right? Um, but it, how healthy is that? Right. And you can maintain that. I've known women who've just eaten small portions of food under eaten their entire lives, what it does do is it advance, advances aging, um, and it also makes you more prone to just having um, health complications later on, especially, especially thyroid problems. Okay, so let's get into the next section here. I want uh, you guys to listen to this chit-chat she does. You know, butter. I know that restaurants can be very stimulating places. So the thing about where, what she's doing next now, she's getting ready for a restaurant. But in this previous clip here, and you guys can watch this video. I'm not going to go into this clip. Uh, she talks about how her and her boyfriend are going to... Here, I'll even play it. Never mind. 
going to use from the Slimon Starch program the restaurant call script so that I can call them a pretzels, crackers, hummus, puddings. A lot of people are going to get Indian food and I am placement for and there was a lot. So in a couple days, my boyfriend and I and another couple are going out to dinner. We're going to get Indian food and I am going to use from the Slimon Okay, so she says in a few days, her and her boyfriend are going to get Indian food. Okay, so is that all she ate that day was those two plates of food and that was it? Because the next scene is going to be her going to this restaurant, okay? So this isn't, maybe it is a full day of eating for Healthy Emmy, maybe it's not. Maybe she like put this dinner in to make it a complete day of eating for her, but we don't know, you know, it's, it's easy to be like, Hey, eat this much food. Like chef AJ said, Oh, I eat 1900 calories a day because I eat all this food on this table. But somebody actually pointed out to me that she said that very often she doesn't eat all of that food that's in front of her. So, you know, I'd say calorie intake would make sense that it's actually even lower than 1900 calories a day for Chef AJ. And most people um, who do this, they fluctuate depending on their activity level and such. But the whole point is, is that I actually recommend that people eat over 2000 calories a day. If you're a sedentary person and you're a tiny woman, 2000 calorie a day minimum to meet your energy requirements. Um, most people, most women are more active with children, jobs, exercise, whatever, and you need about 2,500 calories a day on average or somewhere in that range. Nothing under 2,000 calories a day because then your body actually senses that it's in a famine. It's going to downregulate your metabolic rate and um, everything is just not going to function as well as it could if you're eating sufficient calories. Okay, so we're going to watch this part next addressed under this. I work with people that have difficult relationships with food. And I know that a lot of people that watch this video. Most people have difficult relationships with food because they don't eat enough carbohydrate calories. And it's that simple. Not enough carbohydrate, too much fat. When you eat enough carbohydrate, you get rid of cravings, you get rid of disordered eating behaviors, disordered eating thinking. Um, and you're just full, you know, you got normal everything you and you function just great, lean, fit, healthy body, and you eat as much as you want. Have relationships with food that they want to learn to improve. And even if you don't, even if you have a great relationship with food, the tips that I'm about to share are beneficial. So restaurants can be very stimulating places. There's music playing, there's a lot going on. And in those scenarios, you can become very do people really put makeup on their neck and chest? I know that she uses a lot of self-tanner, so maybe she's trying to cover up. You'll get blotchy from using self-tanner after it starts to like fade away from showering, and that's kind of why she looks orange all the time. Um, I don't know if you guys have noticed that. You can see it with her hands sometimes when she shows it in, in certain videos because her hands, you know, will show the self-tanner like marks. I used to use self-tanner when I was like in high school, so that's the only reason I know. So there's no judgment. I'm just pointing it out. <laughs> Overstimulated and lose sight of what your values and your philosophy is around food. You know, in the Slim on Starch program, we have you establish what we call your food philosophy, which is what is the relationship with food that I want to have. And when you're at a restaurant and there's smell, but you don't need to like go overboard with having this like extensive, like behavioral pattern with food. You just learn, eat the carbohydrates and you keep the fats out of the diet if weight loss is the goal. Um, and it's really that simple. It, it o Overthinking only comes into play when you're trying to eat your carbohydrates, but restrict them too. And there's music and there's people and there's just a lot going on. You can be stimulated and those morals and values that you have around food can kind of just float off into the distance because it's easy to stick to your diet when you eat enough carbohydrate. You are just so overwhelmed by everything that's happening and- And I recommend like prior to going to restaurants, one, make sure the restaurant's gonna have food that you want to eat, potatoes, rice, pasta, pretty simple, you know. Um, you can request no oil. 
Um, I recently went out for to a new like Japanese Asian restaurant. They were able to make me cucumber sushi rolls, which is what I wanted. It wasn't on the menu. It's pretty easy. I always eat before I go out to dinner too, um, or drink some juice or have like a sugary beverage at dinner. Um, for me, dinner is more about being social than it is about like eating. Um, and then I'll eat like at, if I'm still hungry because, you know, dinner was so, so then I'll come home and eat food. Like y- it doesn't need to be this like ritual. If you don't want to, you know, you don't, you kind of want to fly under the radar. I know that's the case with a lot of my clients is they say, I don't want to make a big deal. The fact that I'm eating differently from everybody. And so I can understand how at restaurants, people fall back into patterns that they've worked very hard to eradicate when they are eating at home by themselves. So let me give most people eat aren't eating at home by themselves, like they have children and families to feed and things like that. And I find the easiest thing to do is like, make your starches like this is dinner time, right? Make your starches, make your vegetables, and then everybody will eat from that. And then that's what you eat. So it doesn't have to be like overthinking, right? Give you some tips that I use at restaurants so that when I go out, I can make sure that I'm still acting in alignment with my food philosophy and what food represents to me in my world and how I use food to fuel me. Right. But when you're using food to fuel you, there's no like overthinking about it. Like what she, maybe she has the time to be this way with food, but generally it's a sign of disordered eating. As you know, or you might not know, I meditate before each meal. And when you're at a restaurant, that can be. Okay. (laughs) Most people don't have the time to meditate before a meal. They're just like, I'm hungry. I need to eat, right? Like you get that hunger signal. You're busy. You need to eat. You go for the carbohydrate. Like it's that simple. It doesn't need rituals indicate disordered eating pattern. Difficult to do. So before going to the restaurant, I am going to meditate here to get myself into rest and digest and feel ground and centered and calm. But something that you can do when (laughs) are are you really doing that before you go out to eat? Like it's that big of a deal. Like what? <laughs> now I'm not in the same position because I have three children, but if I'm going out to dinner, like it's chaos before the meal, I get to relax on the drive there, but like the, I don't mean to meditate or like think about overthink about the food, like, or, or have anxiety. Are they going to have what I need to eat because I'm always carved up. And when you're always carved up, you just naturally have low cortisol. Like she's trying to override her cortisol that is likely higher than normal because she under eats. Okay. So it's a, a compensatory mechanism for under eating. I just saw the eye jump and said twins. Um, I forget which one was uh, talking about this. I think it might've been Stephanie, Uh, and a video that just came out today about nose breathing prior to meals and such the biggest element when it comes to lowering cortisol okay is eating enough sugar okay here it is right here (laughs) real world intake of dietary sugars is associated with reduced cortisol reactivity following an acute physiological stressor If you want to manage your stress level, all you have to do is eat. So what I would suggest, you know, as she's like gearing up for this restaurant meal, because clearly she's hungry, right? (laughs) Uh, Just drink some juice. That's all you got to do. Okay. All right. We're going to finish this up here soon. When you're actually at the restaurant is when you get there and you sit down and everything. I always will go to the bathroom because I like to wash my hands before we actually eat. But when you're there in the bathroom, using that time while you're washing your hands to feel the warmth on your hands, smell the soap, look in the mirror and reconnect with yourself. Don't look in the mirror and look to try to find what's wrong with you. Look in the mirror and be on your own team here and reconnect with yourself and say, we got this. We're going to enjoy the time here with our friends and the social gathering, and we're going to use food to fuel us. And that's right. Use food to fuel you, but don't go to the restaurant so hungry that you have to do this kind of stuff. Like it's, it's, it's just basic, like eat 
the carbohydrates and you don't have to like have this ritualistic behavior. It's very simple. There's no overthinking. There's no over planning. There's none of that. Just like go to the grocery store, buy your high high carb foods, fruits, starches, and sugars, eat them throughout the day. And then when you get to your restaurant meal, like it's no big deal. Like you don't have to do this unless you want to. Affirmations are also very powerful here. So if you're a client of mine, I may have written affirmations for you. The only affirmation that you need when it comes to your diet is high carb, low fat. If, if weight loss is your goal. Okay. That's it. Anything else is just how to trick your body into under eating. Oh, um, that's something that I often do. My- okay. We are going to go to her meal here. Oh, actually, let's let's just take a look at healthy Emmy. So she's she's very tiny. She's um gonna be 29. What I noticed with her is there's no um breast tissue. And this is something that happens when you run a very low body weight as a woman. And some of the other downsides of running this low body weight too is low estrogen and low progesterone. So I, if I was a client of Emmy, I would say, hey, like, how is your blood work? Like, can I see what your blood work is? Because I'm not sure that if what you're, is pr- what you're promoting, because it kind of seems restrictive that I'm only eating like potatoes and not too much potatoes, though, and lots of vegetables and just like fruit, but only a little bit of fruit. Like if it's actually healthy, like, can you can you show me? Can you prove to me in lab work that what it is that you're doing is health promoting. My hair behind my ears. Okay. So here's her food. So she called the restaurant ahead of time to get this Indian food um, made oil free, which that's a pretty cool pro tip. I've never tried to do that before. But I do know that a lot of times, um, you know, Places will put oil and rice. So, I mean, uh, you can always ask at the restaurant too. And I know that she called ahead of time when we, you know, saw that earlier in the video. That's what she was doing was calling ahead of time to make sure her food had no oil in it. Started out with some veggie samosas, which of course, those are not slim on starch friendly. They're deep fried, but still wanted to show them here on the vlog what others were enjoying. Okay, maybe she showed them because she like really wanted to eat them, but she's like, no, my food's coming. I can wait. And the thing about that is that like if you think somebody else's food looks good, it is generally a sign that you are past the point of being hungry yourself, right? Maybe you – so I always suggest before you go out, have something else to eat so then you can wait for your food. Have your high-carb juice, Sour Patch Kids – Uh, maybe a pre-dinner, whatever it is, so that you don't feel very tempted by this other food or even like, you know, ravenous or, or anxiety or, or need to go to the bathroom and like take, take some deep breaths so that you can (laughs) make sure you don't eat it. Right. Just if you stay carved up, you stay on top of your hunger and fullness cues naturally, especially your hunger. So you just don't feel the need to like binge out on other high fat food, because that's what this is. You know, it, all there is, is, is it high carb? Is it high fat or is it high in protein? Generally, is it high carb or is it high fat, right? Protein's going to come from, you know, eating more high fat stuff, but yeah, high carb, low fat. That's all, all it is. That's all you need. Here on the vlog, what others were enjoying. Okay. Let's get to her meal here. And again, I'm unaware as to whether or not she actually ate this in the same day. I don't think it's the same day. Maybe it's an example of what she'd eat for dinner, but it's hard. So it's hard to, it's hard to determine the calories here because I think this is a different day. Anyways. Okay. We got a a bowl of rice. So this is probably like one cup cooked, which is like 600 calories. Got gobi, which is cauliflower. They made me rice without oil, chana masala, which is chickpeas, my favorite, and then eggplant by Nan Bartha. And it was so funny. They actually brought me salt because I asked them to make it without salt, too. And they're like, the reason why she's not using the salt is because salt um, increases your appetite, right? So that you'll eat more of the food. Really, like the way that I view sugar and salt is that 
you can only eat as much as you want. And if you're not restricting them, you're, you're tuned in to your natural desire for them. Okay. And then your body's going to shut off when it's had enough. So when it comes to sugar and salt, I eat as much of that as I want. Um, and then, uh, my appetite will shut off accordingly. So, and I don't store like excess fluid or anything from consuming like, uh, salt to taste. I don't know about that. So they brought me salt because they're like, I don't know if she'll like it without salt, but I didn't end up using it. It was just so cute. Yeah, that's a tactic for under eating because the food's not as tasty without the salt. And that's a, it's a tactic too to follow starch solution, starches and vegetables because they're not as tasty as like fruit and sugar, right? Fruit and sugar is more simple sugar, so it's tastier. And then salt makes things tastier, so then you eat more of them. And so by avoiding sugar and salt, you actually, it's a way to like under eat because the food's not as tasty. But then again, you're under eating because you're not fulfilling your desire for glucose. So I had a question today, uh, said Dr. Lyle, who wrote The Pleasure Trap. He said, don't eat sugar and salt and oil, which I say get the oil out because it's high fat, right? Causes insulin resistance. But when it comes to sugar and salt, uh, they, they'll stimulate you and they'll make you overeat. But you can't overeat when you're eating carbohydrate, okay? I don't believe in it. Um, you're only gonna eat as much as you need and then your body's gonna regulate your appetite accordingly. But by avoiding sugar, salt, particularly, you actually can trick your body into under eating because the food's just not as tasty. And the reason why it's so tasty when we add sugar to it is because that's what we are seeking out. That's what we're biologically designed to seek out is glucose. So when we meet our glucose needs, our appetite shuts off. I had so much refined sugar today just to recover from my workload going up that it, I find it hard to eat enough sometimes because the sugar shuts my appetite down so much after I've had enough of it. And, and then I, it's like impossible to overeat on carbohydrate and sugar and fruit and starches, but it is possible to under eat when you're eating this way, where you're avoiding fruits and sugars, which are main, um, groups for obtaining carbohydrate in the diet. We really enjoyed our time together. So she's just showing the food. She's not showing how much she actually eats. Um, so, you know, this whole thing, this bowl of rice, 600 cal calories, bowl of cauliflower, 100 calories, chickpeas, 200 calories, the eggplant, maybe 50 calories. So six, um, I'm going to say this is 100, 700 900, 950. So this whole meal, maybe a thousand calories. So maybe she should hit 2000 calories for the day if she ate this whole thing, but likely she didn't. So, you know, it's not uncommon for this to be like starch solution, um, under eating addition, like what high carb Hannah and plantiful Kiki promote where it's like 1500 calorie day meal plans. You don't have to eat this way to be slim. I actually think healthy M means underweight, and probably dealing with some hormonal um, imbalances because of that. That's just a speculation. I don't know for sure um, because maybe she has days where she eats more. So, you know, she is meeting her carbohydrate calorie needs. But what she promotes um, to her clients and then they come and find me and say, hey, I did this healthy Emmy program. I couldn't stick to it because I it was too restrictive, so I'm coming to you so you can help me figure out how to eat a high-carb, low-fat diet and be healthy and get enough calories. All I'm saying is that you can eat unlimited fruit, sugar, and starch and be healthy, fit, lean, naturally, and just obeying your hunger and fullness cues to the fullest extent where you have no cravings for fat because that's the bottom line is if you're under eating on carbohydrates, you're naturally going to gravitate towards higher calorie dense options after a while it's good you're gonna have to use willpower to stick to something like this uh long term and if you do use willpower it's likely that's going to cause hormonal imbalances like i mentioned so um yeah all you need to do is is add the fruits and the sugars back into the diet so this is all healthy food 
you just need to add more carbohydrate to the diet in order to be metabolically healthy, to have a high metabolism, to, to have normal regulated cortisol, um, to have insulin sensitivity. Okay, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Leave any comments or questions down below. Again, if you want my coaching, um, the link is in the description box of this video. And you can, I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching, a coaching program where I explain everything scientifically um, in regard to the human metabolism and how it works. And I also do one-on-one -on -one Zoom calls as well. So I will see you guys next time. Um, uh, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. And yeah, have a great day.